Hi, I'm Charles, and welcome to part 15 of the OpenSCAD video series. In this part, we're going to be talking about lists and things that you can do with them and how to use them. Okay, let's get started. So essentially what a list is, um, is it's uh, a set of objects, numbers, strings, uh, Boolean values, uh, in a very general sense, um, I might get picked on a little because, uh, lists are a little bit more specific in, in computer science, but, um, generally what we've seen so far, the three dimensional vectors or things with three entries, like one, two, three, like we've seen before, uh, that go inside translate statements and rotate statements and the size of cubes and things like that. Uh, these are like lists, um, except these are only three, and in the case of 2D, two element lists. So what this does here is we can actually define longer lists as long as we want. We can define them to be empty. And see the code compiles either way. So we can have one, two, three, four, five inside our list. Um, we can also have other values. We can have true values or false values. Boolean, these are called Boolean values. Um, or we can have strings. Uh, hello. And so this is a list. Uh, maybe I'll change the name to my list and it's just fine so if we echo it we will get something back in the console so if you look here in the console we essentially get what our list is it's the same thing as what our list is so that's up there and then we get this. So we can use this um, to define special behaviors uh, and things that we want, uh, translations and rotations uh, and a whole bunch of other transformations or whatever transformations we define. So this can be really useful. So let me make another list, just move that up there. Um, but we should, we should look at how to index lists as well. So I'll make another list. And what I mean by index is we have certain values in our list. One, two, three, four, five, true, false, and hello. And how do we get those values? Cause those values are important and we want to be able to get them. So let's say we have four, three. So you know what, I'm going to start at zero because this, this will help illustrate the point of indexing. So we have zero, one, two, three. And these correspond to the indexes of the list. So when we index a list and I'll get to what indexes are and how to use them, um, we start at zero. So this is zero in this case is the zeroth element of the list. One is the first, the one element. It's the element located at index one. Two is the element located at index two, three at index three, and so on and so forth. So if we want a specific value, then we're going to want um, a method to pick which value. So say we want, uh, the first value or the zero with value. So we say second square break, square braces, square brackets, uh, and then zero and we get zero. And it doesn't have to be zero just because it's the zero with element. Uh, we can put five 
and we'll get five back over here. And we get five because five is in the place with index zero. So now if we change this up, uh, 20, four, 10, if we index at location three, at the index three, if we take what's at index three, we get 10. Because 10, if we count, we go zero, one, two, three. And there is no fourth index, even though we can see that this list has four indices or four indices and four places, it only goes up to three. There is no fourth index. See, it's undefined. So when we reach the end of the list, if we go past that and we look for the fourth index, it doesn't have a fourth index. To have a fourth index, it would have to have five items. We get an undefined value, which could be a a bug in our code. So it's important to um, be able to know which indexes define the list. So there's the last index three. If you have a list that is of length four, then the last index is three or the length of the list minus one. So for example, I'm going to echo the length of the list and you can get the length of the list just by the command len uh, and second. So I'll get rid of the indexing. So for the length of second is four because we have four elements inside the list. So yeah, you might wonder why I'm going off on all this. It, it does have relevance. So, um, let me let me give an example. So let's say uh, our test list is equal to four, five, five, and six. And don't forget this semicolon there. That's important. And we want to translate something. We can put test list in here just as it is. So Yeah. Uh, another thing that we can do is we can make lists of lists. So if I come with this part out, so we have three special uh, vectors that we want to translate by, and we don't need a bunch of complicated stuff. We just need three things. So we can make a list of lists. So let's say one, two, three, five, four, three, and eight, nine, 11. So on our custom lists, we can uh, use a for loop. So let me just make this clear. We have three lists inside our list. So we can say for n or v is probably a better one. V vector. V equals vectors. So what this means is that v will take on every value inside of vectors, which means it's going to take on this value, which is a list one, two, three. It's going to take on this value, which is a list five, four, three. It's going to take on this value, which is a list of eight, nine, and 11.
So what we can do, translate cube. And we can just put V right in. We don't need square braces or anything. Square braces are already included here. So we can just put in V and we'll see what we get. So we get three different vectors. We've translated by three different vectors uh, our cube. So we can use different ones. Now, there's a method to do the same thing, but a slightly different way. So if we want to do it by indexing, uh, let's just get rid of this part. Um, if we want to do it by indexing, we can say V, let me just change it, V, okay, we'll call it C. If C, C is equal to uh, our range, a range that we've defined from zero to len vectors minus one. And this will give us the values from zero all the way to len vectors minus one. So the length of vectors is three because we have three things in here. And uh, we want the last index to be two because that's the last index. This is at index two, this is at index zero, index one, and index two. So we want our last one to be two. So that takes us to two. So we're good there. Here, it's a little bit different. What we have to do, we can't just use C like that. Um, we have to index vectors. We actually have to type vectors again, but this time we use the square braces and we put in C. And what this will do is it will give us exactly the same thing as this, which might be a little bit underwhelming, but it does it with indexing as opposed to um, the value where V actually takes on the value of the vector. C is just a number, zero, one, two. So you can potentially um, use that as well. You can use that number that there are cases where that's helpful as well. Um, as opposed to just having your, your variable take on the value of a vector, which can be limiting sometimes. So why don't I just stop talking and preview it. And as you can see, it's exactly the same. And maybe you can't see that it's exactly the same because it didn't change, but I can just change one value just to demonstrate it. So we can see that this one moved. Um, so uh, actually vector, there's a lot to talk about, um, not just on vectors, but on lists. In Open Eskit, I just wanted to give a very basic overview of um, what they are, just a little bit how they work and indexing them, just because we're gonna be talking about modules next. And there's a topic in modules that uh, you need to know a little bit of indexing and what that means, just to understand it. So that's mostly all I wanted to talk about in this section. So thank you for watching. Uh, hopefully you learned something. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one.